bro, you're licking my feet and it really tickles. Why are you disrupting my video? Why are you disrupting? <laughs> Hi friends! Welcome back to my channel from me and Rory. Rory just really wanted to be in here for the video, so I just let her hang out. So she's just gonna be my co-host today. So, I have been trying... Rory, I'm trying to talk here. I have had quite a time trying to get this video out to all of you. Um, if you all remember, my bookshelves previously were like a big mess. I had books that were kind of nice on here, but next to them over here were stacks and stacks of books. In my living room was stacks of books, in my bedroom was stacks of books, on the bench when you first walk into my house was stacks of books. Basically, books were everywhere but on the shelves. And then on the shelves was all these books that I'd had from my childhood that I either hadn't read or had no desire to ever read. So I had this genius idea that I'm going to go through my bookshelves and get rid of all the ones I don't want, try and donate those or sell them to my local used bookstore, um, and then have like a whole bunch that I can sort through and see what I want to read and which ones I have read and what are worth keeping and everything like that. And I'd make a whole video and it would be great. So I did that. And at the end of the video, I created like a small little bit um, where I talked about all the books that I had that I hadn't read that I had like a desire to read. And it was really great until I went to edit the footage and I realized that most of it was missing. The camera that I record on my videos on uh, has a 15, 16 ish minute recording limit and then it just like stops recording. And usually like I'll try and like look over at the thing and notice it's flashing and be like oh and stop it myself and restart it so that way I don't miss any content and then just stitch it all together. But I must have missed it because it went from like my shelves being full to all of a sudden all the shelves were empty and I was basically like wrapping up the video I think by the time I realized it had stopped and I was like oh. Um, so then I was like okay cool I'll just kind of skip the reorganizing part and do a part where I just talk about all the books that I like got rid of and do an unhaul video. Um, and the idea was like at the end I just quickly went over the ones that I had unhauled and that way you could let me know if you think that I would enjoy any of them and they're worth giving another shot to. In the true um, organized adult person fashion, I took all the books that I was going to get rid of and I put them out into the hall to deal with eventually. Well, a couple days ago, this little one right here had a bit of a tummy ache and threw up over a bunch of the books. Now, in good news, thankfully there were ones I was getting rid of. In bad news, they're kind of just garbage right now. So, I had a follow-up video that I had also made, which was all the books on my shelves that I decided to keep and plan on reading. But the problem was, it was really more of a follow-up. It was kind of a follow-up to the previous video where I just quickly went over the books that we had talked about in the previous video, and I'm like, I kept these ones because of this. And it doesn't really make sense without the first video. And I don't really want to re-record the other one with the dog puke books so I decided to scrap all of those and then here I am I'm just gonna make a video of all the books I have on my shelves that I've not read and plan on reading and then hopefully you can all let me know down in the comments which ones you think I'm gonna like or which ones you're interested in seeing my opinions on and all kinds of fun stuff or just to you know see what books I have and maybe you're just you're curious you know I'm curious well I know which ones but like I'd be curious if I were you either way let's get to the video <laughs> so since my original shelf reorganization video where I deemed that like I or decided I had all these books that I hadn't yet read and really wanted to, I have actually read two books off of that list. So I'll just talk about them really quickly because they're kind of not really involved in this book but like they were from the original so I, like I feel weird excluding them. But I'll get into more detail of them in like a future video. But the first one that I read was actually an arc that I had from work. The Bookshops of Yesterdays by Amy Mayerson. And this is the story of a girl who um uncle owned this bookshop and she'd always loved it as a kid however one night when her uncle doesn't show up to her birthday his her mom and her uncle get into a fight and their family just loses contact with them him uh, throughout all of her their life uh, their her uncle and her had had a great relationship and he always did all these fun scavenger hunts with her but years later down the road um, her uncle dies and leaves her with one final scavenger hunt and his dying bookstore and she has to solve the scavenger hunt to find out why their family lost contact. 
so I won't go too much into my thoughts, but it was, it was fine. <laughs> That's all I'm really going to say. In a future video, I'll get into more of it. And this is one I actually just finished just today, Arusha and the End of Time. And this is the story. Um, this one's actually a middle grade uh, fantasy. It is a Rick Riordan present. So this is a girl named Aru whose um, mother and her live together in a museum of Indian history. But Aru has always kind of been one to kind of stretch the truth a bit amongst her friends at school. And she has told everyone at school that her, where where she lives she has a haunted lamp that's cursed so one day her friends friends show up at the museum and um, want to see this haunted lamp so Aru lights it releases an evil demon and basically has to save the world it was a really cute story I really liked it but again my thoughts on those will kind of come in a future video so how I organized my to be read shelves. So kind of the ones that you guys can see over here, this six are all my I haven't yet read them shelves. So I kind of organized them in a little bit, sort of an organization fashion. Um, so start near the bottom and these ones are all of the arcs. Now, since I have um, recorded my original video, I've actually gotten four more arcs from work. So I'll kind of talk about those really quickly first. Um, one thing I do want to preface all of this with is I often don't know the synopsis of books that I want to read too well. Like if it's one I kind of go out and buy on my own, I might know kind of what it's about or I've heard really good things about it, but I don't necessarily know it too well, especially with a lot of arcs because they're sent to me from work unsolicited. I haven't like sought them out. I don't know the synopsis too well. So I might kind of glance over a few of them, but I'll kind of give you like the gist of what I know because I don't usually like to spoil it for myself because I find sometimes if I know the plot too well um, based off of the synopsis, I might go in expecting something and be disappointed. Since my original recording of my video, I've also probably DNF'd a book as well. This was an arc, um, Joy Fielding All the Wrong Places. Personally, I don't know if it was just because it was an arc or what the subject sounded really interesting, but the writing was not so interesting. And it's basically the story of these girls who join online dating and it seems like they get matched to a serial killer. Sounded interesting. I got about like that way in. I've probably DNF'd it. We'll see. So the new arcs that I got really quickly, um, my work had like a giant stack of arcs just sitting there and they wanted to clean them out. So they're like, take what you will. Um, they're going to be gone by the by Monday. So like, take what you can. So I'm like, okay, fine. So I took uh, Deviated, uh, book two in the Lifelike series by Jay Kristoff. I had recently started Never Night by Jay Kristoff and I was in really enjoying it. I was enjoying his writing. So I had wanted to get to this, but I hadn't read the first one. But since the arcs were going away, I decided to pick it up. So I have absolutely no idea what this is about. I have absolutely no idea if I like lifelike. Um, but I might as well get it while it's free and I can give it a try. So we'll see how that goes. This book, Lanny, um, was one that I, I briefly skimmed the back and it sounded so weird and mysterious. It was like this town and mysterious things happening and dogs and magic. And I have absolutely no idea, but it sounded really intriguing. And it's pretty small too, so it should be a pretty quick read. Yeah, 210 pages. So I, th and really they're space, this, oh, the writing is weird. Don't know what it's about. Um, this one here, Beauty of the Moment, I know it is a teen contemporary about a girl who, um, I don't know, it's about a girl and a guy and family expectations, but I've heard very good things about it. I've heard it's a beautiful story, so I decided to grab it while I could and see if I'll check it out. And this book, Someday Jennifer, it sounded like the most ridiculous book in the entire world, so I had to pick it up. Is this guy and nothing is going right in his life, um, so he decides to move back in with his mom, grow his hair out, and like pretend it's the 80s, and like only watch shows from the 80s, and listen to music from the 80s, but like the rest of the world is still in the present. And it seems like what he wants the most out of his venture back into the past is to reconnect with his, um, who is she? Oh, the girl who sits beside him in English class, Jennifer. So it sounded ridiculous. There's only like 50 people that have read this on Goodreads, or maybe it's more now, but like when I first looked, it was like 50. And I'm interested. <laughs> so the other arcs that I have, I organized them in um, date of release, it's dating back as far as February of last year up to 
next month. Um, again, I have absolutely no idea what a lot of the ARCs are about. With the way that my work works, um, we are able to sign up for ARCs for certain subjects. I'm signed up to mystery thrillers. Publishers send me and my coworkers ones that seem interesting so that we can read them and then recommend them to people. Unfortunately, they send so many that I can't necessarily keep up with them. I tend to read the ones that I'm really interested in that I previously have read about and want to read. Other than that, I put them on my shelf to eventually read. Well, before it was in a stack to eventually read. But my goal is to read some of these. So if any of you know anything about any of these, let me know. I will prioritize them and give them a try. Um, Only Child, I believe, is about a school shooter, but that's all I know about this one. Came out February of last year. It seemed to have really good ratings. So I figure I'll give it a try. Three Days Missing, I believe, is about kids who have gone missing. Um, a nine-year-old son is missing. Yeah, so yeah, missing kids. Our house. Uh, husband is unfaithful, woman has to keep things together, but then kids go missing. Uh, the Witch Elm. So apparently Tana French, Tana, Tana, I, I have no idea how to pronounce her name. Tana French is apparently a very well-known author, um, a very highly rated author. I've heard so many people raving about her, but I've never read anything by her. I believe this one is more to the mystery, and it's this guy who finds some clue in like a witch elm tree about his childhood. Um, I'd actually started it at one point, but then I put it aside. It's a hefty one. It's going to take me a while. It's got 400 some 450 pages. So it's, it wasn't at the top, but if you all think it's interesting and I'm gonna like it, I'll give it a try. The Au Pair. No idea what it's about. Assume it's about an au pair. Um, that doesn't even sound like an au pair. Sounds like someone's missing and her childhood wasn't what she thinks it is. But I don't know. Once Upon a River, I almost got rid of because I didn't think from the cover, I mean, I don't want to judge a book by its cover, especially because this is an art cover, but the official release cover looked basically fiction-y and just not my thing. So I almost didn't even accept this one and left it at work. But the synopsis sounded kind of interesting, which I don't remember at all. Oh, Missing Children. Um, but it's so highly rated, I decided to give it a try. Stalker by Lars Kepler. I think I started a Lars Kepler book years ago. I feel like there was an, what are those things called? Hourglass on the cover. I don't remember finishing it, but I remember enjoying what I did read. I have absolutely no idea what this is about. A woman being watched in her home. I guess a stalker, that makes sense. Yeah, stalker. Um, but anyway, I've heard good things about them and I'm willing to, to give it a try at some point. Uh, Call Me Evie. Um, no idea. An isolated cabin, a remote beach. Oh, she's hiding from a terrible thing she's done. Someone knows. Uh, this one, the cover just looks really pretty. It's all purple and green. It just looks pretty. I have absolutely no idea what, what it is. I should play a game where I read a title and I look at the cover and I try and guess the synopsis of a book. I'm gonna note to future Jen. But anyway, from this, I would assume someone has a secret and someone knows. And I'm thinking a neighborhood by the house on the cover. <laughs> the Scholar. Um, I think this was about uh, something happening at a school? I don't know, a murder. Keep you close. Absolutely no idea. And this one doesn't even really have a, a, a proper thing on the blur the back. This is the blurb. This one up here. Someone who needs to find out the sense of right and wrong. Wherever she goes. Now apparently K.L. Armstrong is actually Kelly Armstrong who writes fantasy, I think? So I have absolutely no idea what this one is about. Uh, kidnapping, another boy missing. Apparently a lot of these books are about kids going missing. But anyway, I know nothing about this one. Oh, this is the one about the school. So it's a gifted school, but no one is quite who they seem, I think. I'm pretty sure that's what that one's about. The rumor, no idea, assuming it's about a rumor. Uh, the Perfect Wife actually just came out last week. I'm assuming it's about a woman who wants to be a perfect wife, but I'm not too sure. Oh no, this is a woman who wakes up and has no memory, but the guy is claiming to be her husband. Sounds interesting. And this one here, I have absolutely no idea what it's about, but the title is so neat. Um, Drive your plow over the bones of the dead. I'm intrigued, and this one actually doesn't come out until... Oh, it might be out now, 8.13. It just came out on Tuesday. So I could read it and theoretically be kind of caught up. So my next section that I have, I kind of put the books on these two shelves that are all a part of 
different series, whether it be kind of the first book in a series or a sequel. I kind of put them all here because I have a really bad habit of like starting series and never finishing them. So I figured if they were on their own and I'm seeing them, I can see how many of the series I own I need to finish. Right here, I have Linwood Barclay's No Safe House and apparently it's a follow up for No Time to Fur Goodbye, which I honestly don't remember what it's about. I think it's about a girl whose like entire family gets murdered. I don't know. Um, I used to be a really big fan of Lin-Win Barclay. My mom and I used to read a lot of his books way back in the day. She would buy them or I would buy them and then we'd swap. So I kind of had like a lot of them. And I remember reading uh, no Time for Goodbye when it first came out and I think I picked this one up with the full intention of reading it and now I don't even think I remember what was going on but I'm sure I could probably just like Wikipedia uh, synopsis or something and figure it out to continue on with this one. And then I have the second and third books in the Mistborn trilogy. I read the first book in about a month which is pretty slow for me but it is a pretty hefty book. My biggest problem I had with it was that font size is really small and there's really no margins and like the mar like the words come like right into the inside. So I found it very difficult to read. Um, I have since found out that the UK has beautiful covers, which I'll insert right here, that are the trade paperback size. I'm not a big fan of like the pocket mass market size paperbacks, but these are the only ones available here to me. So I am considering like selling these or like a used bookstore or whatever, trading them in and then potentially picking up the UK covers because I feel like they'd just be more readable for me. It's just a personal choice. But the Mistborn trilogy is, it follows the story of these people who kind of have these abilities basically they can ingest metals and then burn them to do different types of things like certain ones will make you stronger certain ones will make you faster and all kinds of things and people who can burn all the types of metals are called Mistborns and it follows uh, this one girl who joins like a group of people to rebel against the cruel leader of their area and stuff interesting story just haven't finished with it yet a while ago I picked up Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief, the first book in the Percy Jackson and the Olympians, uh, Percy Jackson and the Olympian series. <laughs> to be honest, I don't know what it's about, except I imagine it's the chosen one trait of Percy Jackson being the chosen one. I don't know. But I picked it up at a used bookstore, meant to read it, still haven't. But what's really interesting is just having read uh, the Arusha book recently, apparently that one actually has a lot of Percy Jackson references and is very similar to it is what a lot of people are saying. So it'll be really interesting reading this having read Arusha. It would have been more interesting reading Arusha and being able to get those references, but maybe I can do it backwards. Why not? <laughs> Lies of Locke Lamora. I have absolutely no idea what this book is about. I feel like it's about people who thief, like they're thieves. I, I don't know. I feel like there's pirates, but I could have just been like imagining that. I've heard really good things about it. I just haven't got around to it yet. <laughs> Ruin and Rising is the third book in the Grisha trilogy. I'd heard pretty mediocre things about it. I knew I would have absolutely like, adored this series had I read it like when it first came out, but reading it now I can tell that the writing isn't like ideal. I don't love the main characters. The only character I actually really liked was Nikolai and he was only in the second book. I don't know if he's in this one. So I wasn't like super inclined to carry on with it, but I've heard such good things about Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom, so I would like to finish this at some point so I can read those ones that are apparently quite good. Um, but the Grisha trilogy is about, oh god, what is it even about? It's about this girl who has powers, I think, or something. So she gets brought to the palace and has to train as a Grisha to do something? I don't even know. There's a darkling and there's a guy and he was whiny. I don't even remember anymore. Uh, the Tiger's Daughter. I actually have absolutely no idea what this book was about. Um, a really good friend of mine sent it to me to read because it's her absolute favorite. So it is super, super high on my list to read. However, I just haven't been in the mood for high fantasy lately. So when I am, this is definitely like near the top, but apparently it's a series. So I'll read this one and see how I feel and then maybe go into the others. Lair of Dreams is the second book in the Diviner series. I wanted to say trilogy, but there's a fourth one coming out, isn't there? Or is it the third one that's coming out? I don't know. Either way, this is the second one. <laughs> I read the first one back in February and absolutely adored it. My store didn't have the second one, so I was just kind of waiting to pick it up. And uh, I went to a different store and I saw it there, so I had to grab it. The Diviners is super interesting. It's kind of like a paranormal historical fiction mystery 
mystery with horror elements. Um, it is about this girl Evie. It's set back in the 1920s in New York. She is sent to basically live with her uncle um, because her parents were kind of tired of her flapper ways. But uh, Evie has some kind of magical ability that when she touches objects she can kind of see the history of these objects and she uses that ability to help solve a murder case that's going on involving a ghost that's actually super spooky super creepy and i loved it so much i loved the 1920s slang i loved evie i loved everything so i cannot wait to get back into this one book two and three of the darker shade of magic trilogy by v.e schwab i read the first one loved it. I love V.E. Schwab as a writer. I think she is fantastic. I absolutely adore her. I would say she's probably like one of, if not my favorite writer that startled me. <laughs> but the only downside is she likes to leave her books. I guess it's a downside and an upside. She likes to leave her books with a conclusion, but like with a hint of something that leaves you wanting more. The downside is that it's pretty concluded, so I don't feel the need to pick up the next one as someone who, like, doesn't really read series. I would like to continue on with the series. I do really like the characters. I'm interested to see what happens in the next ones. But it wasn't one of those, like, oh god, it's a cliffhanger. I absolutely need to know what happens next. So I haven't been, like, super inclined to pick it up. But it's definitely high up on my list when I do get to it. <laughs> These ones are about this guy, Kel. I think his name is Kel. It's Kel, right? Anyway, we're gonna call him Kel. Uh, Kel has the ability to travel between different Londons. So there's four different Londons. There's Grey London, which is basically our London. There's Red London, where magic is aplenty. There is White London, where magic is basically power. If you have magic and you are powerful, you can take over, you can kill the king and become the leader. And then there's Black London that was destroyed by magic. Kel happens upon a relic from Black London that must be destroyed. People are after him. He encounters this girl, uh, Lila Bard, who is fantastic and wants to be a pirate, and I love her. <laughs> and it's just kind of their adventure. I don't know what these ones are going to be about, but if it involves them, I'm gonna be happy. <laughs> Book two and three in the Miss Peregrine series. Um, I guess it's a, f a f there's four of them out now but I don't know how many there's going to be. I picked up a box set a while back like not the Christmas that happened but the one before that when it was on sale at my work I think I managed to pick it up for like 10 bucks for like all three of these which is a really great deal. I read the first one right away absolutely loved it but again I felt like the book itself had a conclusion so I didn't feel inclined to pick up the next two. I would like to at some point but I just haven't got around to it and to be honest I don't know if I remember what the first one is about. I feel like there's this home for peculiar children who have special abilities and this main character has these special abilities and then he's dating his granddad's old girlfriend? I don't remember. <laughs> Those are just parts I could be very wrong. But anyway, I would like to at some point continue on with it. A Curse So Dark and Lonely is the first book in a series. I believe it's supposed to be a Beauty and the Beast retelling. The main character, I believe, has some kind of disability, but I can't remember what it is. I have no idea. I honestly don't remember what is about it's about other than Beauty and the Beast retelling, but I love Beauty and the Beast, so I was very excited just for that. So um, this one I was one I'm really, really excited to pick up. I feel like I'll probably get through it pretty quickly because it's just... I, I love Beauty and the Beast. Soul of the Sword is the second book in the, the series that the name is not coming to me. Shadow of the Fox. <laughs> this is the second one in the Shadow of the Fox series, which is a story about a girl who is half Kitsune, which is a fox spirit. She was raised in a temple by these monks, uh, just living her usual fox spirit life, being mischievous. One night there's an attack on her temple and everything is set ablaze, and that's when one of the head monks tells her that they are basically guarding a part of this scroll. And if these scroll parts get assembled and people perform the ritual correctly, once every like 10,000 years or something like that, you can summon a dragon and the dragon will grant a wish to whomever summons him. The only problem is if it ends up in the wrong hands, it could basically be the destruction of the world. So she is given the piece of the scroll and tasked to go and find the other part and protect it. However, when she's leaving her her temple, she runs into this guy who works, works? 
lives with, I don't know, he's with the Shadow Clan who is searching for the scroll. So she decides to like trick him and use him for protection and he's after the scroll and he doesn't know she has it and all kinds of fun stuff. I loved the first book, fantastic. It had a whole bunch of Japanese mythology and stuff like that too, which was super, super interesting. Can't wait to read the second one, but apparently I can because I still haven't read it yet. <laughs> Okay, up on my next shelf up here are the standalones that I have not yet read. I have a couple books that I had just kind of picked up from a used bookstore that I didn't really like plan on reading anytime soon. They're just kind of like, a, oh, I'd like to read it someday. So I got the collected works of Oscar Wilde. I picked that up at a used bookstore. All I wanted was the picture of Dorian Gray, but he's like, oh, this is better. This is better. You get the whole thing. So I got suckered. <laughs> I have the illustrated collection of Sherlock Holmes. To be honest, I just wanted to pick up a couple of the stories just to try to read. I've never read anything by Arthur Conan Doyle. Uh, I would like to read some Sherlock Holmes, but... And then I did get these really cool covers of uh, some Agatha Christie stories. Um, these ones I did pick out on my own and I was super excited about. I've read a lot of Agatha Christie and really loved her, so I'm really excited to uh, check that one out. This book right here I picked up recently. It was like six dollars or something. I don't know what it's about though. I remember reading it at the time. Historical fiction in a school for girls. I don't know. It sounded interesting. Cover looks interesting. I would like to read it. The Boy Who Drew Monsters was actually recommended by my best friend Queen. Um, I'm going to actually be reading this as my final book for the Newt's Readathon. So I don't know if you've been I probably will release this before I release my Newt's vlog. You maybe have seen it, maybe haven't. Anyway, this will be my final book. I believe uh, that this one is the story of a boy who draws monsters and like real things happen. I believe it's a horror novel. I don't know too much about it, but I know that Queen really loves it, so I'm interested to check it out. What she left. I have absolutely no idea what this book is about. It was just on my shelf. It was one of those books that I'd had since like childhood. Had absolutely no idea what it's about. When I was going through my shelf, I kind of looked over the synopsis. I feel like I looked on Goodreads and it was either rated really low or really high and I decided to see what it was about. I know that doesn't make sense but what I mean is like a couple of the books I kept because they were so low rated I'm like I need to see how bad this actually is or some of them I'm like I have no interest in this but it was rated like 4.4 and I'm like ooh maybe I should see what this is about I feel like I'm missing out. So it was either like really high or really low or something and I decided to check it out. Hi, it's Future Jen editing this vlog. So I was really curious why I decided to keep that one, so I actually went back to Goodreads and took a look at the rating and saw it was only rated 3.02, which isn't like terrible, but it's also not good. So it was one of those ones I kept purely out of curiosity as to why it's so lowly rated. Like all of the most recent ratings were all just like one or two stars, and I'm curious. <laughs> a Clockwork Orange. I've never read it. I've owned it forever. It's literally like this small. I could read this in like an hour, hour and a half. And yet somehow I've never, oh, I guess the writing's kind of small, like two and a half hours. I've never read it. I would like to one day, I've owned it forever. I, I don't even know what it's about. Have absolutely no idea. I've never watched the movie. Anne of Green Gables. I also have absolutely no idea what it's about, but I'm Canadian and I feel like it's a crime against Canadian laws to have not read Anne of Green Gables, so. I picked that one up from work. It was three for ten with like Anne of Green Gables. I got Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and I think Peter Pan, which is coming up. <laughs> American Gods by Neil Gaiman. I got this as part of a box set of like four Neil Gaimans. I think this came with like uh, Stardust, Stardust, Me, and and that I see boys. I don't even know how to say that. I never wear. And I've not read any of them. I don't even know what this is about. American Gods. That's all I know. There's a TV show? No idea, but it's hefty. It's hefty. Stardust? Also have no idea what it's about. I feel like there's a movie. Maybe not. I feel like Swift really likes this. It's small. I could read it quickly. No idea why I haven't read it. No idea what it's about. One of these days. Perks of Being a Wallflower I picked up when the movie first came out and it's been sitting on my shelf ever since. I honestly don't even remember what it's about. I feel like I picked up the book like right before the movie came out and then I saw the movie so I was like oh well I don't really want to watch like read the book yet and like years later I don't even remember what it's about. It's about like a guy and Emma Watson and I have no idea. One of these days I'm gonna read it. The Dragon Pearl. This one is actually a middle grade book about a girl. I feel like she's also a fox spirit but this one is Korean mythology. 
Yeah, fox spirits. All the books carry, like, or contain fox spirits lately. I wonder why. Anyway, the only thing that kind of held me back is the fact that it's set in space. I'm not super about sci-fi. I'm not super about, like, set in space books. But I am interested to see how it is. Also, I like that the gold shimmers there. Maybe I'll like it. I don't know. A Child Called It is one of the few non-fiction books I own. I picked this up, like, an eternity ago. I actually think I got this for Christmas, like, seven years ago and I've literally never read it. One of the girls I went to elementary school with, I feel like I remember her reading it and really liking it and finding it like heartbreaking and that's probably one of the reasons I haven't read it because I'm not good with heartbreaking <laughs> but I would like to try it someday. <laughs> the Legend of Sleepy Hollow and Other Spooky Stories. I have never actually read the Legend of Sleepy Hollow. I've always wanted to. I've always been intrigued. I picked this up at a used bookstore one day in Toronto. I was just kind of walking down the roads and I saw a used bookstore, so of course I had to go in and buy something. But yeah, I haven't yet read it. I would like to. <laughs> if you think I'd like it, let me know. The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, I've never read, but it was like $2, if you can still see I have the sticker there. It was $2, so I couldn't not pick it up. But like, I don't know how different the book is from the movie. I've seen the movie quite a bit, I know the movie pretty well, so it's not like near the top of my list to read, but I'd like to read it one day. The Lion Game by Ruth Ware. It's actually the only Ruth Ware book I've never read, but I've also heard it's a lot of people's least favorite. This one is about a girl who goes back to her hometown. I believe her and her friends used to like play a lying game or something. I don't know, people lie, things happen, mystery, death. But yeah, I, I would like to read it at some point. I just haven't been super inclined because I've really enjoyed a lot of her newer books and I'd be worried that I won't enjoy this one as much. The Jungle Book I also picked up just because it was two dollars. Again, I imagine it's probably pretty similar to the movie. I'm not too sure how far it deviates. I would like to one day read it, but not near the top of my priorities. Winter Girls I picked up an eternity ago. I've heard it's absolutely heartbreaking. I've heard it deals really, really well with eating disorders and I've been super, super interested to pick it up. I just, I don't like sad and I've, I want to read it, but at the same time, I need to be in the right mindset for a sad book, you know? But if you think I'm gonna like it, let me know. Again, we talked about this one. I don't even know how to properly pronounce it. I have absolutely no idea what it's about. It has scantily clad ladies and a man singing on the front cover. This does not offer me much info as to what the book might be about, but I'd like to one day read it because I've really enjoyed a lot of Neil Gaiman's writing. The Good Girl absolutely no idea what this is about. I think I picked it up at an airport one time and then ended up... Whenever I go to an airport, I feel like I need a book because I'll bring a book for a plane and then I'm like, oh, but what if I finish my book in my two hour flight even though I'm only halfway through a 500 page book? So I'm like, better get another. And then you go in and they're like, oh, two for 30. So I'm like, better get two. And then they just sit on my shelves and I never read them. Have no idea what it's about. Have no idea if I'm gonna like it. When I went through my shelves, I probably gave a reason of why I kept it, but now I don't remember. And that footage is gone. <laughs> so it's, it, I'm gonna give it a try. Peter Pan. I enjoyed the movie enough. I don't think it aged super well. So I don't know if I would enjoy it as much now, watching it like now while I'm older instead of like as a kid. But I have heard that the book is quite different and maybe a little bit spookier or something. I can't remember, but I'm interested. I would like to see where it goes. I don't know why I keep like... The Perfect Stranger by Megan Miranda. I read um, All of the Missing Girls by Megan Miranda. I picked both of these up as like a two for whatever kind of deal, something. And I ended up not liking All of the Missing Girls, so I was really tempted just to get rid of this one. And to be honest, when I was going over my shelves, I couldn't remember if I'd even read it or not, but I decided to keep it. I'll give her another shot. This one seemed to be highly rated, so we'll see. The Almost Moon. I read The Lovely Bones by Alice Siebold a long time ago and I remember really, really enjoying it. Now, I granted I read it when I was like 18, so I don't know if I would still enjoy it as much anymore, but this one is so poorly rated. I picked it up because I loved The Lovely Bones so much and then just never got to it, but it's so low, like such a bad rating that I want to read it just to see how bad it is, you know? <laughs> But I've also not been like super inclined to pick it up right away because it's so poorly rated, if that makes any sense. I don't think it does. I have no idea what it's about. An almost moon. 
no idea. Pride. I got this book in an owl crate. It's a Pride and Prejudice retelling, I believe set in New York? Brooklyn. It's set in Brooklyn. I've never read Pride and Prejudice. I don't even know what Pride and Prejudice is about, but I'm interested. I got the book in the crate. I would like to check it out, see how it is. I've heard good things about it. And I like the, the pink writing. I think it looks neat. <laughs> Neverwhere. Along the same lines of Neil Gaiman here. I got it in the box set. Have no idea what it's about, but I would like to find out one of these days. I should probably just like do a poll of like which one is the Neil Gaiman book I should read first. Because like of all the books I have on my shelf, I have a majority of Neil Gaiman I've not read. The final one is Joe Nesbo's The Snowman. I've heard this book is fantastic. I've heard the movie is awful. Apparently the story is about this killer snowman or a killer who's pretending to be a snowman. I have absolutely no idea. I started it and got about that far. I found the writing to be a little jarring and a little hard to get into at first. Um, and by at first, I mean I've read like five pages. But it was hard, like it didn't immediately grab me, so I put it aside and just never picked it back up. But I am interested enough in the story that I would like to continue on. So that there is all of the books that I now own that I have not read. If there's any that you saw me talk about that you would really like to see me read, you really think I'd like, or you're just interested in hearing my opinions on them, let me know down below so that I can kind of prioritize them. And hopefully, read them sooner rather than later and they won't sit on my shelf for another five years collecting dust so that I can make another video in five years talking about why I haven't read them yet. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate that. I will see you in my next video. Goodbye! I turned to this page, this is the line I see. Pam has a library of this shit. Well, I'm intrigued.